Hey folks, how's it going? November is finally upon us. Happy past Halloween. And since this is the first of the month, among all the shop resets, I also wanted to take this chance to do a little bit of a planning session, both from Grand Blue as well as the other gacha games I'm playing. Starting with Grand Blue, we've got the Monshian event running right now, which is going to end on the 6th. And afterwards, it will be followed by the Uraten fight. For this one, the boss is going to be the Destroyer Commander. It's going to come, thankfully, with the second skin for Gran and Jita, the second Uraten fight one with the Great Sword. I've been really, really waiting for this one. And lastly, the Axe and Katana for the Celestial Weapons. Why does the Katana have balls? That's a little bit weird. But still, both Axe and Katana really, really good weapon classes. Apparently the Golden Tyrant will also drop a little bit more meat, but I'm not really planning to rank that high, mostly just aiming for top 90k, so 7 to 8k meat should be more than enough, unless I really want to farm hard for these two weapons, which shouldn't be necessary. Yes, last Guild War I didn't buy any of the weapons, I've got 120 mats left over, so I should be able to get both of the new ones. But of course, Katana as the first one, X a close second. Then I think I might want the dagger as well, this one might be nice in a couple of grids, but we'll see later. On November 15th, from the 15th to the 22nd, there's going to be the, the time I got reincarnated as a slime collab. After clearing chapter 1 episode 2, we'll get Rimuru as the collab SSR, which is going to get the uncap on the 20th, once the part 2 opens. And after the ending, we're going to get Veldora Tempest. Uh, that's yet another dude. I'm not gonna lie, I play Grumble Fantasy because I liked a lot of the girls in it. But when it comes to female-centered content, I think we've been kind of starving. That's four events back to back with little to no significant female presence. And when you put this together with the fact that we haven't had a main story in over a year and most of the recently released characters have been kind of flops, yeah, that doesn't really paint a good picture of the game. Still, let's keep our fingers crossed for the slime collab, even though no announcement for the gacha characters just yet, just mission with an eternity send. 10 rolls from the collab character banner, which we always get. And then there's a side story, as well as the usual collab campaign. No mention of the gacha collab units, no mention on what they're going to look like and how they're going to implement them, if they're going to be permanent gacha characters or if they're going to be exclusive time-limited ones. Fingers crossed they're not going to screw the pooch on this one. I really hope that they're going to do something fun for Christmas and New Year's. I'm uh, really keeping my hopes high for the next Zodiac, because other than that, yeah, Grand Blue has been a little bit in a rut, not gonna lie. Still, plot prisms, as many as I can get. Oh, cool, they added a demo bar. And oh, I can also get one sandstone from the shards, finally. Yeah, going up to 7, but no real plans to spend them until I can get Yatima. That, and maybe, just maybe, I could consider going Zephyrus. Because I didn't really manage to spark this year, but I've been YOLOing a little bit here and there. So, at least when it comes to Wind Grand Weapons, I'm running around with three swords, two fans. I've got some greener staffs in here as well, while in my inventory there's double dagger and one of the vein spears. It's going to be quite expensive at 18 gold bars, but I could do 3, 2, 2 and go Zephyrus. Either this or keeping my fingers crossed for the next couple of roulettes, hoping to get a third fan so I can have a 3, 3 and 2 option. Luckily not going to use all of them in the same grid at the same time, but things should change between burst and long form content. One thing that might slow me down on this is going to be Zephyrus himself. 200, no dupes. So the transcendent for this summon might take a little bit longer. <laughs> now, when it comes to the Unitant fight itself, I think I should be fairly ready. 
I've got a okay-ish magnetic grid. I really need to upgrade my Dark Opus weapon. 1x up to M3 might not be all that bad. But at the same time, my plan for the United fight is to just slot in my burst units and keep on bursting throughout the entire thing. I need to try and convince someone to share hosts with me, or at least spam hosts and open them as much as humanly possible. I really don't want to go through another United fight of 22 plus minutes full autos. Two things I need to farm this week is definitely going to be Theater of Temperance, for which I'm getting fairly close. This should not be an issue. This one might. Uh, yeah, this is basically the only real upgrade <laughs> I need for the other fight. I want to try and get a Stariola up to 5 stars, even if the new skill shouldn't really matter. Like, it might be alright for some full auto setups, might be really, really nice for the constant dispel spam. We're going to have to wait and see. But at least for this guild war, it's likely going to be just a Stariola. So, let's get back to grocery shopping with pendants, moons, Prestige, more rings, treasure trade for the potions, then a quick trip to the casino for the exact same thing, an extra 100 potions, and some soul berries which never hurt. Now, gold moons, 65 out of 150, again, slowly building this thing up. These ones will likely go to hunting, unless I decide to fully commit to wind. <laughs> in which they might go to a Rompaya. But we are talking April, May 2025. And so we move on to Arknights. We've had chapter 14 released yesterday with Logos and W Alter, but my W does look a little bit weird. She was still accompanied by a pretty decent Logos, but that's not what I want. The hope is always there. The hope to get lucky is always there. <laughs> but yeah, in the meantime, I will have to try and scrounge as many pools as I possibly can. Because I don't want to walk out of this event without W. Search store. 2.5k should be able to buy everything of value here. Last two more tickets. And he had an, some adunting permits. Sadly, not all, but this is not the big issue. Next, distinctions. I only have 72. I don't know how many more I'm going to get, but I do want to spend them all on the extra tickets, just because you never know. And hopefully, between free draws and everything else, I can scrounge up a few more. I still have to start chapter 12. I still have to start chapter 13. That should be 21 to 24 random for each chapter. And then we have Absolved will be the Seekers, or yet another 24. Should be able to get my hands on 40 to 50 pools, but there is also something that has to happen in the next 15 days, because our kind ends on the 14th. So from here until the 14th, I'm going to have to play through chapter 12, 13 and 14. We can do another 13 pulls. I've been getting such bad rot... Come on, a blue one. I've been getting some bad rotten luck with the limited banner here in Arknights for the past few while. Because even when it came to shoe, I managed to get two of the non-limited operators back on the shoe banner. Okay, plus one for Gitano. Number 83 for Spot. And 84 for another Fang. 84 total, two six stars, but still no Wizzalel. Another thing to keep in mind is that with only 12 days remaining, there's also going to be the extra shop for Absolve Bill BD Seekers that has another three pools in it. Arknights is going to need a little bit of attention this week. I want to get up to speed with the main story as fast as possible, so that I can just go back to farming the chapter 14 stages for these materials. Next up, it's going to be Genshin. Not much to do here since we played through the main story quest already, we're basically just waiting for Mavuika to come out and become playable. As usual, 5 
and five for our monthly shop reset. Uh, so we got Feast of Pursuit, 13 days, but this is going to be just another standard combat event. Ode of Candies that I still haven't started lasts for five more days. Gotta get on to this one because it's for Nahida's birthday. But that's basically it. Exploration lasts 60 more days. Vegetarian Theater just reset. And then we have the Gacha Banner, which lasts for 17 days and 18 more hours. So at least down until the 18th. By the 19th, we have to finish the Archon Quest, because on the 20th, 5.2 begins. Chaska uses a flying gun as a weapon. Not too sure about the numbers that she's going to pull, but that's a character I wasn't really expected to like as much. There's a very small chance I might actually pull for Chaska. If that doesn't happen, yeah, we're basically waiting for Mavuika to come out in 5.3 and later on, little Granny Sidali here too. When it comes to resources, I'm sitting on 585, which should be more than enough to get basically everyone, both from Fontaine and from Snetsnaya. But let's do these five pulls, see if we can get anything decent. Doro, Don 3D Cat. And that's the second 4 star. Okay, we actually didn't get all that screwed. Favonius Sword Tomb. I need this. <laughs> I need this like bread. I'm using my R5 Favonius Sword on Zilonen. She's the one that I use the most. Second one is on Bennett. I will likely try and upgrade this one. Third one on Dendrem C. Also, yeah, not gonna lie, Chaska being an Animo DPS might actually give me a good enough reason to finally build Atsune Miku here. We're going to leave Granny Sitali here to sleep, and that's going to be it for Genshin. Next up, we've got Star Rail, for which I still need to go finish the banana event. Cold Feet pop-up shop is another nine days, anytime before the Guild War, anytime after Arknights, likely. Soundtown Ninjutsu, which follows the main story quest. Again, either I try and do all three in one sitting, or we might even leave this one for a little bit later, because we still have an entire month to clear it. Rappa's banner lasts for another 11 days, but as a break unit, I don't know. I think she's fun, I really like the character herself, but at the same time, I already have Farfly for a break team. Next patch, we're going to get Sunday, who looks like it's just going to be basically a mix between Bronya and Ting Yun, but he also pushes summons. Should be decent for a Jing Yuan hyper carry, but at the same time, still need Sparkle in that team too. And I don't think I'm picking any of those two up. The one character I might roll for next is likely going to be Ting Yun. She's going to be yet another break type unit, but she's going to apply Exo Break on top of the normal character's break bars. That might be a little bit more interesting on a gameplay standpoint. And that might also help a lot characters who want to break units as often as possible, like my little redhead over here. I might be adopting a fox specifically to buff Fimeko instead. Because when it comes to resources, then yeah, I'm sitting on almost 200 pools. Ah, uh, wait, no, these are 200 pools. Embers exchange, 450, 450. Sell our trade. And there we go, that's 200 extra pools. These are not enough to get everyone though. Uh, Fei Zhao, of course, had to pick. There was absolutely no way I would be skipping on Fei Zhao. Uh, Lingsha, I managed to pick as well, losing a 50-50 with Tuimeko, so that's not that bad. I'm expecting to hit 230 pulls for the second half of 2.6. When it comes to 2.7, I should have around 281 for Sunday and up to 332 for Fugue. Might be able to pick Fugue up if I do that. There are some rumors here for 3.0. One of them seems to be a Herta 5 star. And if this is real, if they actually release Herta as another Ice Erudition unit, but a 5 star, yeah, I want another 160 pools saved up just for her. Afterwards, there are some other names that are floating around, but I think I might want to try and save up as much as possible from 3.0 forward. We need a lot more details for the future characters coming up. So for now, let's just burn these five warps. 
uh, don't really have any hopes for anyone coming home. Again, I would love it if I could finally get wealth, most just to complete my collection. But we got Clara last month, and I'm pretty sure I'm very, very far away from PT. We might not even get a 4 star. Oh, never mind, another hook. But that's it. And so we move on to Zenless Zone Zero. Probably the gacha I'm struggling with the most at this point. Friendship Fair lasts for another two days, but this is an event that can be completed instantly. Overlord Feast lasting only two more days though. Yeah, we need to hurry for this one. Yeah, Zenless might actually take priority for the next couple of days, because the events are coming to an end and I still haven't played them. Because on the 4th we've got the 1.3 starting with Yanagi's release. And that one might hurt a little bit. I have been spending everything on the Bernice banner. I did manage to get Caesar, but I lost the first 50-50 for Bernie's. I'm at 46 until the next PT. And at this point, I don't even know which gacha got to pray to. Like, she's a very fun character, uh, even though I don't think I need her that much when it comes to clearing content, my heart does. Even though the thing I need the most is going to be a proper Aether DPS. If I can't get Bernice, I'm going to have to consider whether going for Yanagi or Miyabi. There are rumors Miyabi is going to be an Ice Anomaly unit. If those rumors are true, I'm not even sure I will want to pull for her. I would because she's a box Virgil, but mostly just for that. Otherwise, I think I want to wait for a um, Zhu Yuan rerun. Until we get there though, let's head on over to the shop, because there's another couple of resets here. And let's go, five more pulls for Bernice. Please, please, please. I need a miracle here. Got a gig that pays well? Count me okay, in. another Nicole. That's not too bad. Next ones are going to be for the standard one. But other than another A unit, not really keeping my hopes up. Again, any other character would be fine in here as long as they're not dupes. First A. Uh, this might be Seth's weapon. Yeah, defense specialty. And more Bs. Ah oh, well, we managed to get another Eidolon, which is more than fine. Next up, it's going to be Sword of Convaleria. I think today is where we finally get the second half of Shadow of Calamity. Okay, nice. But the ranking challenges are going to come out next week. Got really lucky with Safia, managed to get my hands on Auguste with very, very few rolls. And the next character that's going to be coming out has just been announced. It's going to be Hasna. She is yet another assassin, yet another blue unit. But between Safia and Cole, I don't think she's going to see that much use. So those are likely going to be another 15 days of saving. And saving for one unit and one unit only. Homa, which, fingers crossed, should be the very next one. Until then, we've got the second part of this event to play through. We've got the challenge modes releasing on the 8th, right before the Guild War interlude, how nice. And I think that's about it. They are kind of spamming events, maybe this might be a little bit much, but it looks like they might want to go and catch up with the Chinese server, which is not that bad of an idea. Sadly, no pools to buy from here, but we do get an Insignia Shop refresh. And for these, I'm still waiting for some of the useful ones. Old Scroll of Auguste, this is a fantastic one. Roaring Flint, Space Time Ring, mostly these three. I haven't gotten a single one of these three and they all have very, very nice uses. Another Arm Guard. Okay, that's fine, this one still goes on Safia. Second one, Weapon or Accessory. Through Lens, another Crit one, that's fine. And the Weapon, yeah, I don't really care about these ones. So on the 8th, Shadow Calamity Challenge Modes plus Stellar Echoes Part 2, we might actually get Homa released on the 23rd. Really, really looking forward to this one. 
Next up, we've got Reverse 1999, Always Pet the Deer, uh, Flurry to the Golden City, which lasts for another 30 days. So this is going to go down for the entire month. But yeah, they're going full 90s on this one. 1000 night, 19 days. Again, one hour chat for this one, because these are basically your character story events. They give a lot of personal details for the units, and this is something I definitely want to play through. Again, I'm thinking unit and fight, you know, side event to the unit and fight. If I really don't feel like grinding and I just want to full auto. Other than this, we've got our little bank here. Oh, I can almost buy 10. They only get 9 so far. I managed to get all the characters I wanted. Now there's Mercuria here, which looks like a really solid buffer. So let's give this one a shot. This would be really, really nice to get. This looks like a 5 star. Oh, double Charlie. So I can buy the last one from the bank. This one. This one looks like a 6 star. So, please, 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 Mercuria. I honestly don't even know where I'm going to get the materials to level up all these units, because I managed to get Kakania as well last, last patch. Oh, Beast. Yeah, nah, not a fan. And I think this is also the first time I lose a 50 50 in this game in a very, very long time. Because anniversary limit. Oh no, I lost one of the anniversary. Because before Lucy, I got a Semmelweis in here. But time limited before losing to Gatian right now. There's a Kakanya here from a 50 50 one. There's a double wind song down here, both 50-51. Villa number one, Villa number two. This is an insane streak. I don't even know how that was possible. After Lucy, I honestly have no idea who I even want to roll for. But I might just start saving up rolls and skip Mercuria. Okay, so that's the calendar for November. In the most important categories, we've got the Unite and Fight. Uh, not sure if I'll be streaming this or if I'll just farm on my own time while playing something else on the side. Get the Slime Collab on the 15th with Part 2 on the 20th. Uh, when it comes to Genshin, we have Odo Candies ending on the 6th. I want to try and get this one down before. Star Rail, finish the main story quest by the 4th. Uh, Cold Feet, Pure Fiction, this should be more than fine. We need to check on the Soundhound event, but for this one we have until the end of the month, basically. Zenless, Friendship Fair, and soon, Overlord's Feast, and soon, so Zenless I want to get through the main story as soon as humanly possible. Uh, Woodering Waves, we have the Lolo campaign ending soon, but at the same time, while I haven't fully dropped Woodering Waves, I'm only really logging in every now and then to check what's going on. I haven't really been actively playing it or farming in it. I think I might want to still check out the new main story quest. I hear it's really, really good. Dark Knights is the other event I want as high as humanly possible. I need to get through chapters 12, 13 and 14. This way I unlock the shop as soon as possible and I can just farm the chapter 14 stages for the shop materials. Next is Convaleria, Shadow of Calamity plus Stellar Echoes. This should not be all that difficult, otherwise there's the Shadow of Calamity challenge mode here that I might want to touch during the interlude. That's the one slot we're leaving open. Oh right, I almost forgot, Bloodstained. I bought Bloodstained for Halloween played the first few hours, I think I'm at like 40% castle completion, might be able to get done in another session, might be down on the fifth one, or we played the win guild war plus side game, which at this point might actually be reverse 1999. Okay then, looks like this is going to be the schedule going forward. Not sure how close I can stick to it. Again, not sure if I will even be streaming all of the United Fight matches because my sleep schedule has already been a little bit ruined. But we'll see. 
fingers crossed, it's all going to be fine. Still, the ones I'm looking forward to the most, definitely Bloodstain Part 2, as well as the Homa Pools on the 23rd. So, I guess that's going to be it for me for the moment. As always, thanks a lot for watching, thank you in advance if you decide to come by and say hello during any of these streams, and see you guys around soon. Ciao!